Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, we're going to talk all about model scales and why understanding this topic can help take your model painting skills from great to awesome. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is proudly supported by these sponsors. When it comes to the art of building a miniature, there probably is not a more important concept than scale. Without scale, there simply would not be miniatures, as everything would be one-to-one. -one. Despite this fundamental importance, most miniature enthusiasts tend to pick a scale they like and go to work, without giving much thought to the actual properties of the subject that is impacted by the scale. This, of course, is a mistake. We likely all know what scale is, a number that defines how much smaller the model is from its corresponding form in real life or if the subject is sci-fi or fantasy and does not have a real-life equivalent, how close it comes to some analogy for its size as it's understood in its particular setting. But, as I alluded to, scale has properties that will affect how it's painted, and understanding this is a requirement for excelling in the art. Sure, you might paint similar subjects repeatedly until you're satisfied with the outcome, but this is really succeeding by mistake. It's far more economical for your time to stop and learn the fundamentals so you can transfer your skills between subjects. In this video, I'm going to cover some essential points to understanding scale. In next week's video, I'll highlight, pun intended, some simple techniques that you can use to maximize your work within your chosen scale. Now here I must say that this topic is both vast and not that well defined, and I'm sure that I'll be using some terms that you may have a different understanding of. Your terminology or opinions may be different. If it is, maybe tell us about it in the video comments. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Without their assistance, Miniature Landscape Hobbies would not be possible. If you would like to learn more about the benefits of becoming a Patreon supporter, please check the link in the video description. Broadly speaking, there are three different types of scale. These are Fraction or Ratio Scale, Wargaming Scale, and Heroic Scale. Fraction or ratio scale is likely the most common, and it's expressed as, unsurprisingly, a fraction or a ratio. For instance, a lot of model kits are 1 35th or 1 75th. I think we all understand that this is an expression of how much smaller the model is than its real-life counterpart. Here is a Mark 44 Ammonite. It's 1 20th scale or 20 times smaller than the real thing is supposed to be. And I say supposed to be because of course a Mark 44 Ammonite isn't real. If you put 20 of this model one on top of each other, you would get the subject's actual height. This type of scale is pretty straightforward and it just takes simple division to convert for your subject. I have a client who commissions me to build buildings from the Little House on the Prairie TV show all the time. I work in ratio scale when I do this because it's just simple. I get the measurements of the real building and divide it down to build a smaller representation. From here I can measure out the parts and get down to work. It's all very straightforward really. Wargaming scale is sometimes considered a metric scale, as it's usually expressed in millimeters. For instance, Flames of War is called 15 millimeter scale. What we're seeing here is not a fraction or a ratio, obviously, 
but a benchmark to reference the approximate size of a common element in the model range. And the benchmark is pretty much always the typical height of a person. So in 15 millimeter gaming, a person is, you guessed it, about 15 millimeters tall. With 28 millimeter models, they're roughly 28 millimeters tall, and so on. Here we must remember a couple of caveats. Wargaming scale is obviously not about perfect representation of the subject, but is instead about conveying characteristics of the subject that can be observed on the game's table. More on this later, but it does mean that if you apply strict math to wargaming scale, your results will be approximate only. The third type of scale I want to touch on is heroic scale. What is this? Well, it's whatever the designer wants. Usually heroic scale will have a loose approximation. For instance, Warhammer is approximately 28 to 32 millimeter, but it's generally not designed to exist as a smaller version of a real world thing. It is instead designed in the main by the imagination and the sizes of models are kept relative to each other for convenience. More important, models might have proportions exaggerated to emphasize important characteristics and draw the eye. Did it ever seem that the bolt gun on your Space Marine is ridiculously large? That's because it is. A Space Marine is a soldier, so his gun is important. So it's sculpted to be very obvious. At this point, I must mention something that's very important the difference between caricature and true scale details. What am I talking about? Well, all heroic scales are caricatures. That is, the details are exaggerated. But in ratio scale and wargaming scale, important or key details on models are sometimes exaggerated to draw attention to parts of the model as well. This is defined as caricature detail. Before we get too deep into this, I must mention that there's no hard division between where true scale stops and caricature begins. Suffice it to say that for miniatures, most caricature details come in the form of faces. They're exaggerated to make the expression on the model more obvious. This only makes sense when you consider humans are naturally drawn to look at each other's faces. Weapons, as I also mentioned, are often exaggerated too. But the exaggeration could be on any key details the designer wants us to zero in on to better identify the model's purpose or communicate its motivation, intent, etc. Ironically, if you scaled caricature details up to one to one, they would be out of proportion, creating huge bulbous noses, huge spherical heads, etc. But at smaller scales, these exaggerations are almost a requirement, so we can identify what we're looking at. True scale is the opposite. This is when the proportions of the model match its real life equivalent as exactly as possible. The result is preserving the realism, but at smaller scales, say 15 millimeter or six millimeter, Key details like facial expressions or equipment will not be immediately obvious. In this example, I have a 15mm Battlefront brand Soviet Commissar from Flames of War. He's a little bobble-headed, and his pistol is ridiculously large relative to his body. But you can tell he has a gun, and you can get an idea of what his face looks like. Now I add a plastic soldier company commissar who's also 15 millimeter scale, but he's rendered in true scale. Notice his head is more proportional and so is his equipment. The problem is you can't tell much about the model as his face is so small it's really hard to see, let alone paint. Ultimately though, whether you like one or other form of detail is up to you. Before we leave this topic though, we have one more consideration, durability. Certain features, especially in wargaming, where a model is routinely handled and hit by dice, 
are at risk of being damaged, as well as being simply overlooked. Because of this, sometimes certain details are exaggerated to make sure they just don't snap off the model. Here's a Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle in 1-100 scale for Team Yankee. Notice the cannon barrel is very prominent. The real-life equivalent is actually much smaller and would be less obvious. It would also be really slender on the model because of this. Obviously, the sculptor of the model deliberately oversized the barrel, so now we can see the tank is in fact armed, and maybe, more importantly, the barrel of the gun will not snap off next time a stray D6 flies by it. So there you have it, a whirlwind tour of the different types of scale, and some of their key nuances, at least according to me. Next week we'll unpack these details to demonstrate how understanding them can improve your painting skills. This should be useful for my viewers, as painting techniques are always of huge interest for miniature enthusiasts. Pun intended. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe, press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.